guys so thanks for joining me today for this painting tutorial i'm going to be going through a few of the colors that we're going to use uh, to begin this painting um, firstly we're working on an 11 by 14 primed canvas that i used acrylic gesso to prime with and this is the gesso that i use so i applied one coat i let it dry and now i'm going to use my large blending brush and this is just to get the background covered so any brush that you have that's big enough and that you feel comfortable using go ahead and use that you don't have to have this specific one but if you're curious this is a number 50 filbert brush and we've got titanium white a uh, light here it is light blue permanent for the sky and then i'm going to add a little bit of this bright lemon yellow cadmium yellow light hue at the base where we have a little bit of grass area we'll add a bit of flowers there um, where we're going to have our rooster so i'm going to go ahead and start this painting now just by getting my brush a little bit wet i want to add a bit of water to my canvas definitely not dripping we just want to have a damp canvas to apply our paint on it'll go on a lot smoother and easier this way the acrylic gesso helps quite a bit too okay so now i'm ready i'm going to just scoop up a bunch of this blue and i'm going to start just by applying it on the top i like to get the sides and the edges of my canvas too Pick up some more paint, make this just a little bit thicker. Okay, and now without washing my brush off, I'm going to pick up some white. And I'm going to start adding little scoops and sweeps like this to create some soft, sweeping looking clouds. And then work my way down pushing the rest of all of that paint out of my brush onto the canvas. This will be a nice base to add our yellow over top of in just a few minutes. And then with a sweep of my brush, it's going to go lightly like this. I'll wash my brush off and dry this off quickly with my hair dryer and then we'll come back with our next step. Okay, so for our next step, this is nice and dry now, I'm going to take a blending brush, mop brush, I've got this round one right here that I'm going to use, and I'm going to get my brush just a little bit wet. I normally don't get these brushes wet, but it depends what you're using them for. So when I want to create some soft clouds in the sky, I'll get my brush just a little bit damp and then tap in just using the edge, just tapping in the edge there. And I'm going to keep this nice kind of diagonal sweep, sweepy feeling that we've got for our clouds. And I'm going to just kind of exaggerate that a little bit more. So that's a dry brush that you're hearing and I need a little bit more water on my brush so that I can get a softer, bit of a softer look. So I just got a bit more water there. Now I know that our, our rooster's gonna be right about here. So I know that I'm gonna be going over some of these clouds, but I want it to look really natural. I don't wanna Kind of just place all my clouds in and around like that thinking about where my rooster is going to be too much otherwise it will look it'll tend to look unnatural and too thought out or planned out you don't want to lose that natural flowy sky look so just don't think about your rooster at this point just have fun adding your clouds in and now i like the way that looks but i want to come in with 
a smaller filbert brush and just create some a few smaller clouds. So I've got this filbert brush right here. It's a number nine. I'm going to get it a little bit wet. And I'm just going to tap lightly and just kind of push so I get a little bit of paint on the tip of my brush to work with. And what I want to do is create a really dramatic long sky. So the perspective is more sky and then kind of the horizon down here. And to make it look like this sky just kind of goes on for miles, when we get that perspective, we want to add smaller clouds that come sweeping down here. So see these tight little curls, little scoops. And then to create that bigger, smaller to bigger cloud effect that's going to help with our perspective, we're going to exaggerate that and make them a lot larger as we go up. Everybody's got their own, just like handwriting, everyone's got their own distinctive type of clouds and style. And don't fight that, guys. Don't ever try to compare the way you paint things to another artist. You're meant to paint them the way you do. That's your uh, individual creative expression. That's a hard thing to, to learn and let go of when you're a beginner painter. So all you can do is just take hints and tips that, and some of our advice that we're offering to you. I mean, us, all of, all of us YouTubers and instructors out there, take little bits of our advice here and there and then see how it develops, how you can develop your own unique creative expression. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that look. I'm going to leave it like that. I don't want to have too much on this side. I mean, we could, if you wanted to, add a little something, but I really like the way we have that sweepy look, and it's a little bit darker right there. So I'm going to leave that. Later on, if it dries a bit too um, dark and kind of just gets lost into that blue, then I might add a little bit more white to my clouds. But for now, I'm just going to leave that and I'm going to come down here with a little bit more white and I'm kind of just scumbling and tapping and wiggling around. This is just to sort of create maybe maybe a little bit of rock or sand, just a little bit of ground coverage and we'll come in with some green here in a minute or yellow I mean to make green. So I'm going to wash that brush out and switch over to another one. gonna stick with a flat brush. This is a number 12. I'm gonna get it wet. And so it's just a little bit wet. Remember no drips. And I'm gonna start to come right down here and we're gonna just apply this yellow right over top of the blue so we get a nice springtime fresh green tone. And we're going to keep it really narrow down here at the bottom, remember, because we want to have more sky, 80% sky, 20% land down here to give us that really uh, dramatic perspective. And to make it even more dramatic, what you can do is I'm just going to take a little bit of white and I'm going to start to create sort of a slope. So just a slight little slope like that it can be really neat. And just a little bit more of my white and blue. I'm going to go down a little bit lower here.
and then just start pulling the excess paint out of my brush. Then I'm going to take more blue and yellow and I'm just going to mix them right here. So I'm going to take more blue and get a bit of a darker green. And I'm going to come up and over. And I'm going to leave that little bit of lighter green behind there because maybe that's kind of just indicating some rolling hills way off in the distance. I'm just going to wash my brush off, dry it off, and scumble off a little bit of this paint here, exposing that little bit of white and blue that we had earlier. Okay, so I'm going to go through the next set of colors that we're going to be using. For the rooster, we're going to be using yellow ochre, burnt sienna, phthalo green. And don't forget to look below this video in the description. I'll have a full list of everything we're using today. I'm going to be incorporating some of my Holbein Luminous Neon paints. If you don't have these, just use regular uh, light orange, um, bright any bright red that you want. And I'm just, for the fun of it, adding a little bit of neon pink. So I've got my neon red, neon pink, and neon yellow warm. And then I've got phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. I'm going to be using my number nine filbert brush. You can use any size brush that you want that you feel comfortable with. I'm going to begin with my burnt sienna. I'm using the burnt sienna for the underpainting because I think that it is a nice color to use for underpainting. You could also use yellow ochre or really any color that you want. I'm going to just get I got my brush a little bit wet, dried it off, and I'm gonna apply the paint on the tip of my brush because that's the only part of the brush that I'm using right now to, to freehand this out. So we need to decide how big we want our rooster to be. So our rooster is in the foreground, so he's gonna be quite big, and I'm gonna start right down here and just start going like that for his leg. And his feet are going to be down here. And we'll have another one here. We're just doing this really freely and roughly. And whatever we don't like down here, we'll just kind of cover up with some flowers and some grass. Okay, there's the first leg, and then we're going to go sweep down right over it. And then we're going to go up. I'm going to go ahead and paint this in. Make it a little bit more exaggerated and stick out a little bit more right there. So before this paint dries, I'm just going to Get this all covered in, and then we'll come around with the head and the tail. So I'm using a little bit of water to help thin spread this paint. Okay, we'll just add the head right here. Okay. 
a little beak. And then tail is going to come up right here. So we'll have all sorts of beautiful feathers. And I think I'm going to save this part. We'll add a little bit more of this burnt sienna, but we're really going to do a darker underpainting. just to give you a better idea of the shape. So just a few little sweeps and flicks, and that's why I like using the, the filbert brush. It's great for feathers and any kind of wispy things that you're painting. This is going to be red in here. So I'm going to dry this layer off and then we'll come in with the next colors. So I'm going to add a little bit of white to my burnt sienna. Three legs. And I'll come down here and just start lightly pulling and flicking with the tip of my brush. And then it stops right about there. It's going to be a deep, deep phthalo blue, bluey green down there. I'm going to add a little bit more white to the tip of my brush like this. And then I'm going to come around carefully with white. And get a little beak in there. And just down right here, we're going to have this red. Whoops. It's okay, we can cover that up. I'm going to have a little sort of oval here that's going to be a little bit of white and then we'll add a little bit of pink to that after. And I'm going to come in right about here and start doing the direction of all these little feathers.
we're going to have right here. A lighter patch. Now this is going to be sort of an orangey, yellow ochre-ish color right there. And same with right here. But the feathers, they're going to go in this direction. So we're going to pull and flick. And you can go the other way too. From, you, from the end of the feathers, pulling up. Okay, so to go over those colors again, phthalo blue, phthalo green, ultramarine blue, and I also added some yellow ochre. Okay, so let's go ahead with our ultramarine blue, a little bit of green, both blues and green, and that makes a really dark color. We may not even need the burnt sienna, and we've already got the burnt sienna right under here anyways. So we're just going to cut in right like this. and paint inside. Now we're going to cover up these feathers. I'm going to leave this patch here where it's going to be that warm gold kind of a color. So I'm pulling some of this blue and green out this dark color in between where these other brighter feathers are going to be so that we have that nice contrast. And then it gets dark again right about here. And over here it's going to be really dark where we have the tails. Of course, we're going to have some bright colors in there after. I'm going to outline this a little bit again. Get a little bit of water on my brush, and I'm taking the combination of all these colors. So up and over. Now I'm going to begin to take a bit of white with these colors. And I'm going to start to pull little sweeps in between and overlapping. Now we can create little flicks. It's like painting palm leaves on palm trees. That's what it reminds me of. Got a little bit of white on my brush. I'm going to go back into my phthalo blue, green, ultramarine.
And here I've got an even tail fan. These are really neat because, well, they're even and you can create little lines that are kind of evenly spaced. So I'm gonna just take these colors, my blue and green with a little bit of white. I need water. And I'm gonna start pulling and flicking like that for my little feathers. And then I'm gonna start on the ends and pull in. So you can do it either way. These brushes are so much fun to use. I have a few that kind of just curve right here that are a little bit tighter. Twisting with my brush. One of my liner brushes, this is a number two. I'm gonna go right into my white here. And what I'm gonna be doing is layering over some of these once they dry. So I'm gonna be generous with my white. Be adding some more color after. Maybe a little hint of purple here and there too. I'm gonna go to a regular fan brush now that I got wet. It sort of does the same thing as the even tail, it splits apart. And I'm gonna take just my green this time with some white. Just pull and wisp a little bit more color in there. And one of my favorite blues is phthalo blue. So I'm going to take some of that with just a little bit of white. Now I'm going to start to come around the side here with my blue, green, a little bit of this lighter blue. You just want to lighten that green up, that phthalo green a little bit. And we'll just kind of grease around the front of the leg and the chest area here. Add a little bit of white to it. I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow with that green. Just very lightly. Add a little hint, isn't that pretty? Just a little hint of that green in there. And then my dark colors again. 
So you just want a nice balance. Light and dark. And I'm going to start to come in here with my ultramarine blue and white. Let's get a little bit more in there. And we'll start little taps like this. And I'm going to pick up my phthalo green, add a little bit right in here, some little flicks like that. I want that to be a bit darker, so I'm going to just go with my blue. So you just want the green, light green, to gradiate. That's all I'm after in that area. It's too light, so I need to add the green and the blue together. Go back in there. Remember this spot and this spot's going to be the red orange color. Okay, I'm going to go back into my ultramarine blue. More blue this time than white. I'm going to apply it right here. Little scoops. Not over blending at all anywhere. A little right there. Whatever's left in my brush here, I'm just gonna pull and flick in between some of these feathers. So I'm gonna take my beautiful phthalo blue and I'm gonna start creating these little scoops. Pick up a little bit of white. And then I'm going to do a few lines. And they're going to slightly overlap. And then get darker. I'm just going to go into my phthalo green again, guys and add these little, little tiny little scoops to create that beautiful feather texture. Just a hint of it. Just a little bit more white right there, right there. Taking a little bit of my blue, phthalo blue and white, a little bit lighter this time, and I've dried it off so it's going to show up a lot better this time. So we're going to scoop and pull, scoop and pull, and then it gets a little bit darker as we go down and in between. So if you do it too light, you're not seeing that separation, just come in between like I'm doing here and then right back in to that bit of white, little scoops. Okay, so now it's time to start adding our lighter colors. I'm going to begin clean brush here, my yellow ochre, and I'm going to do this quick little sliding and flicking my brush, or you can do it slowly.
that. And we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit right there. And we're gonna add some right in here. Have the eye right there. And this is just a bit of underpainting where I'm adding this yellow ochre thin layer right in here. Make my beak a little bit bigger. Okay, now I'm going to go into my neon colors. So I've got neon red and neon yellow warm. Okay, here we go with our neons. Neon red, neon yellow warm, neon pink. We've also got a little bit of yellow ochre and white that we're working with still. So I'm going to take my neon red first. And I'm going to go inside. And just paint in this area up here. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> See the yellow ochre underneath is just going to make it a little bit brighter. Gonna start to curve over here and start to overlap overlapping part of the yellow ochre and the burnt sienna and you see all those different tones you get so that's why it's important and nice to have these under painting tones that we use Continuing with my neon red here. overlap down here a little bit. I'll be making that a little bit darker after. That's going to be a little bit more in shadow. And in that area as well. A little bit of my yellow ochre. I'm just go inside that slightly. Come around the side and start layering a little bit more. Take a little bit of my neon yellow now. Okay, the eye is going to be somewhere right about here. I'm going to come around with my light yellow, neon yellow. And I'm going to start to turn my brush on the end like this and pull and sweep with all these little skinny feathers. 
we're going to have them the brightest. So you want to just slide your brush like that so you've got it on the end. Take a little bit of white now with a bit of water in combination of the neon yellow. And we're going to add some bright gold highlights. Have a few little squiggly lines inside of there and a few little highlights and then back into my Start adding some little feathers right in here. I'm going to go in, use my number two round brush, get it a little bit wet, and just take some of my blue, any blue that you want with a little bit of burnt sienna. So really kind of watered down like that. And I'm gonna go in here and add a bit of shadow, kind of the shape of a triangle. Outline that. We'll outline this too. We're gonna put a little, little line in between that. a few little lines in here. A little bit of pink, darker orange color. We'll go inside where the eye is. And for this area in here, just looking at the photo, photos, it's a little bit pink. So I'm just taking a little bit of my neon pink with some white. Then I'm going to scoop up more pink. And I'm just going to start exaggerating it and adding some more color. And then alternating with my pink and yellow mixture. Take a little bit of white. And just work a bit more on this beak. A 
and eye area. Do a little dab here. And then just back into my watered down blue burnt sienna color and add a little bit of these little squiggly lines in and around the pink and the white. Going back for my burnt sienna, I'm going to start coming in around here to create some shadows. And I'm just going to start adding little lines. A little bit more of my neon red. I haven't washed my brush off. I've still got a bit of that burnt sienna in there. You can add just a little hint of thin here. And I want to add some more up top here. I want to bring that red back. grazing over that shadow. It's still going to show through once it's dried, but it'll have more of a red depth to it. I'm going to go into my um, white and pink with my Zen Wisp fan brush Just because I notice that there's a few lines that go across like that. So I want to incorporate that. So again, just lining it up there, pulling and flicking over you can go from that side too. So we'll do that again. Line it up and then twist over. Something right in there. And there's a little bit of pink down on the feet as well. Just a little bit like that. Back to my dark color. I just want to add a little bit of shadow in here of an outline shadow contrast. A few little lines. Again, just water down. Dark color. Dark color is the burnt sienna with blue and green. little bit more shadow right there. I'm going to take my white and start creating little little feathers right here. So see there's so many different brushes that you can use. I've used the Wisp, the Filbert, this round brush. I just accidentally picked up a little bit of pink, but I kind of like that, so I'm going to leave it. I'm taking a little bit of ultramarine blue, white, a little bit of pink. I'm going to make a violet. Should 
the smoky purple color. Just gonna add a little hint of that. I'll grab a little bit more of my ultramarine blue and just have some of that going in there and then back to my phthalo blue we're going to create just a few more of those little scoops and have some of them kind of just come over top Few of them come just down over here. More phthalo. Now, without washing my brush off, I'm going to take yellow ochre, my pink, and a little bit of that neon yellow. I don't want it to be terribly bright, so that's why I didn't wash my brush off. I'm going to let that some of those dark colors kind of bleed through here. And we're just going to go underneath and sweep up into the dark blue and green. And there's even some tails into some tails in there, or some feathers, I mean, not tails. <laughs> so we can just use a little, I'm just using a bit of burnt sienna, blue and green, just to get it in around there. We can do just a little, little shadow and slight little outline here before we come in with a bit of grass and flowers and whatever else we want to add. So I'm just using that cadmium yellow, my phthalo green, and my phthalo blue here. And I'm just going to start tapping in A little bit of that dark color. And then I'm going to go into my burnt sienna without washing my brush off. Make some of this a little bit darker. And I'll use my round brush again my number two round brush. I'm going to take a little bit of white and yellow and I'm just going to pull, make some simple little flowers. Overlapping that brown and green mixture is still wet underneath. But that's kind of nice to pick up because then you get some natural little mid-tones and shadows in there. We can layer over. I'm going into my white. It's got a little bit of blue in there. I'm not going to worry about that at all. Just make another green color. So 
There's just lots of little dots and dabs. And then I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna for the centers. I'm just going to go back in with my light yellow mixture and just add a few little dabs on the insides of these, the center of these flowers, just to highlight them a little bit. Now, before I finish my petals, I would like to add a little bit more white into my clouds. I'm just going to use a smaller filbert brush. This is like a number six. Back into my white. I'm just going to carefully go inside. And gently scumble. I want to add a little bit down here. So don't ever think you can't go back in and add some more after. I mean, it definitely will look more natural if you um, do it from the beginning and then work your way from background to foreground. That being said, sometimes we don't always get the look that we want or we've painted over a lot of those clouds. And I just feel like this needs a little bit more white make it stand out so just a little something like that and then this down here I want to make it look like it's farther away so I'm going to scumble a light little tinted with yellow dry brush over Make it look farther away and then even a little bit more white. Back to our flower petals. Yeah, so if you don't have a lot of white, it's not going to show up. That uh, well, maybe you want to just have a bit of a softer look, and that's okay too. I'm not going to go over every single petal because some of them are going to be brighter and more indistinct than others, and that's how you get that that look, right? Of some more in focus, some a little bit more in the distance. Definitely want this one to show up, so I'm going to add more. And you can layer over. Don't worry if you go over the centers, you can always add more after. Go back and fix that. So I'm just going to take a little bit of those dark colors again. Burnt sienna, maybe a little bit of blue even in there. And we'll come back in and add the center of our flowers. Maybe a hint of that highlight in there, here and there. outline just likes a little bit like that now the last thing I do thing I do is I'm going to add another highlight on these feathers and I'm going to use my even tail brush we need 
water again. Blend the two together. Really want it to be on the tip of your brush. So I'm going to call this one done. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this and learning how to paint this today with me. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more and give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment below and let me know how you enjoyed watching this one. Take care everybody. Happy painting and I'll see you soon. Bye.